You know, there is so much cool technology for opening doors these days. I don't know if you've noticed uh, on uh, the gadgets you have or on your home or cars or anything. I know on our car, as long as I have the key fob in my pocket, I can walk to the back of our car, kick my foot underneath the car, and the back whoop, magically just comes open. I go to the car door, and just the act of reaching it goes tick, tick, and it just opens up. That is so awesome. I, love I, I heard about some other uh, gadgets that are there for door opening. There's the ZK Taco Bluetooth Biometric Smart Lock. I had to read that one, like that is a long name. It opens your front door in four different optional ways. It can use your fingerprints, it can use your smartphone, it can use an ID card or a mechanical key. Oh my goodness, so many things to just, just to get in your house, that's awesome. Uh, another one I read about, and I love this being a pet owner, is the Sure Flap. Somebody say Sure Flap. The Sure Flap pet door. So it lets your pet, you can either have a microchip, you know, embedded into your pet. <laughs> wow, that's intense. Or it can wear, wear a radio frequency ID collar. And anytime your pet gets near that door, it, whoop, it automatically unlocks so they can just go through. Uh, and then when they get out of range, whoop, it locks up again. Man, that is so handy. I know our dog, Tiger, he is a very demanding little dog. I mean, he doesn't look like it. You would, you would be fooled. He looks so friendly. But he wants in, he wants out. He wants in, he wants out. And I can tell you when he always wants out, the second I sit down to eat. Always. Scratch, scratch, scratch. I mean, I've been around all these hours, but that's when he wants out. So uh, if you're taking notes... The sure flap for Christmas for Pastor Garen. Okay, no, well, <laughs> duh. no, don't feel any pressure there. Um, why don't you take your Bibles, if you've got a Bible, and turn to the first book of Matthew. We're in the first chapter of the, of the New Testament. So it's the Gospel of Matthew, the, the biography of Jesus in Matthew, uh, starting in chapter 1, verses 18 to 19. And we always use the NLT translation. So if you have a smartphone, you have a choice, you can just go for the NLT so we're continuing our series called Comfort and Joy, and so I'm hoping that you're going to feel comforted and joyful. Uh, I love that offering, uh, the, the generosity time verse that's so perfect about God's joy. And today specifically in this series, I want to talk to you about open doors. Somebody say open doors. Open doors. Yep, online, open doors. Oh, I thought I heard something. That was good. That was awesome. I love it. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, this is what it says. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. Now, before I go, go any further, I, I just want you to know that in this time period, these many centuries ago, when Jesus was born, uh, they, when a person was, was engaged to be married, it was a legally binding agreement. So they, when, just, when they're engaged, they're already like, we're... We are bound to each other. And they're, in that time, you know, they're getting ready, ready for the, the wedding ceremony, all that kind of stuff. So, so it, when Joseph and Mary were engaged, that was a commitment. It's like they had already, the community knew they were bound to each other. Breaking off an official engagement would have been the legal equivalent of going through a divorce. So it's, you, I just want you to understand the intensity of engaged, all right? It means a little something different in that context than it does today. But going back into the word, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's not rush over that too quickly. This is a miracle of God, a life giving miracle. Verse 19, Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man. What does that mean? He was a righteous man. That means uh, in his day, that meant most likely he very faithfully obeyed the law of Moses. And he was a moral, uh, righteous, just man. All right, that's the kind of guy he was. And he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Now, again, realize it's a little different context, a little different culture than we're used to. He had every right 
to bring her before the city to be stoned to death or to go pay a fine and send her away, dismiss her. But he wasn't that kind of guy, and he really cared for her. And I, I just think about Joseph from, from his point of view. He, we know uh, from other places in the Bible that he was a carpenter, and he had his life planned out. Career? Check. Carpentry. Get married? Check. I'm already engaged to marry. And so you've got to realize, in just trying to get yourself into his situation, Joseph was engaged. So they're already legally bound. They just haven't had the wedding ceremony yet. So Joseph had been anticipating consummating. He's pretty excited. Like, we're already bound. We've already had the legal, the, the legal ceremony. We just need the spiritual ceremony uh, and be married in front of the eyes of God. And in the midst of that, his fiance gets pregnant by someone else. Joseph must have felt so disappointed, embarrassed, my least favorite emotion, by the way, <laughs> or maybe even angry at God. Can you imagine what he was going through? You know, we look back and we go, it was, you know, God's son, man, you must have been so happy. No, I don't think he was happy at all. This was terrible. And yet he cared for Mary. And so a quiet divorce seemed like his only option. And this is extra, this isn't in my notes, but when it seems like there's no other option, I just want you to know there almost always is another option. God, God is your option. And uh, so many times he, has, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. That's who he is and how he is. So he thought a quiet divorce, that's my only option that would kind of spare her and I got to get out of this uh, relationship. Go, uh, back to the same chapter, verse 20. So as he, as Joseph, considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Okay, let's not gloss over this. Like, what? <laughs> this is amazing. This is awesome. Wow. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And if you look at the Holy Spirit's activity as, as written down in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, where the Holy Spirit is, there's life. There's liberty, there's freedom, but he is the one that makes a person born again. It is a, a new birth by the Holy Spirit. He is about birth and life and newness and freshness. It's so, what a cool, refreshing thing about the Holy Spirit. And the angel goes on and says, and she, Mary, will have a son. And you, don't gloss over that, and you, Joseph, are to name him Jesus in other words, Joseph, you got to embrace the son. You step up and you be his earthly father. You give him that name. You, I looked it up. A lot of words, you know, you could be plural or single, singular in the English language, but in other languages, it's one or the other. This is singular. The angel says, Joseph, you, you are to name him Jesus. Why? For he will save his people from their sins. And you think, well, how is that connected? That's because Jesus means savior deliverer, rescuer. That's what it means. Yes. But wait a minute. All of Joseph's plans had been so simple, so ordinary, so normal. Career, marriage. He's going to get married, have 2.5 kids, get a minivan, a pet goat, open up a, his own custom furniture shop. Like he had his life planned out sequentially. And now God was telling him to take on a wife and child in one step. I am the child of uh, parents who've been married more than once. And I know what a big thing it must have been for my stepdad to take on a, not only a wife, but kids. That, that's, that's a big thing. 
and think of it for Joseph as if that wasn't, you know, a challenging enough, and it is a challenging thing, and I, I admire so many, so much people who step up to that, like that's, man, you take on that role, wow, good job. <laughs> he, uh, Joseph was going to be the stepdad of the son of God. <gasps> pressure oh my goodness his life was literally turned upside down are you getting this like this is a big deal for joseph verse 24 when joseph woke up from that dream that vision where the angel had spoken to him he did as the angel of the lord commanded and he took mary as his wife wow and i i, I didn't plan to read this verse but he also set aside the anticipating of the consummating. And that was going to have to, I was going to have to wait a while because of God's plan for them. Wow. So we talked about Joseph's plans. How did your plans for 2020 turn out? Wow. Spell that backwards, still wow. <laughs> Upside down, mom, help. <laughs> Maybe you had some financial plans. Maybe this is your year you're going to get out of debt. Hmm. How'd that work out? Maybe you were planning to make a big purchase, a car or a house or something, a boat that you're going to take the pastors out in. <laughs> Maybe you were looking forward to travel. You know, like you were just going to go uh, to someplace really exciting and exotic and warm. Or, or maybe you had just been looking forward to times uh, in the coming year with friends and family. Maybe in 2020, you were supposed to move up a grade and you were so excited about going and being with your friends in a new grade. Or you were actually supposed to move up to a new school, but you've never even got to go to that new school. Man, looking back over 2020, I will never forget this. The, the day I walked out of our office on March 23rd, and I didn't know if I was, when I was coming back or if I was coming back, I, I didn't know. We just knew, get, get your stuff up and get out. Like, that was a hard day. You know, we uh, had been so used to for, for several decades now, you go to work, you have meetings with people in the room, you get stuff done, you help each other out, carry the heavy stuff together, and it always just seemed like that was a given. Yeah. That was taken away. It's not even a given anymore. That normal, natural thing, not even a given. But God turned it around, and instead of working for our comfort, he worked for his kingdom and for our character, and he did something we didn't know he wanted to do through our congregation. He caused us to start a live stream. That was a pretty big thing. And so now, during this service right now, I'm looking at people in the room, and I'm also looking at people online. Yeah. People that couldn't have been with us uh, in the room before because they're too far away. So hi to Everett. Hi to Spokane Valley. Hi to Kansas. Hi to all the, all the places where people are, are tuning in and engaging in this service. And it seems so bad at the time, but looking back, I see how God used it for yeah. good. Yeah. So good. So it was a very difficult year. I didn't say much about it at the time, but the staffing transitions at our church, were, they were very challenging for me. They did not go uh, the way, the when, the how, the who that I had planned or hoped. And it was a challenge, but God redeemed it. And God was working in some other people's lives named Christian and Tori. And uh, we are so thrilled to have them with us. The transition seems so hard at the time, but looking back, I see how, wow, God did something that I, I've never been a part of. There was total overlap uh, so that we're, we, we always had someone overseeing those roles, and we were able to have cross-training, and just all kinds of really good things happened. And now we have a, we have a lean and mean five-member staff, Christian Tori, Garen Shelley, and Elise, and I love, love, love every one of them and their families. And it's just so great to be together. And uh, looking back, I see, wow, God, you were there. You weren't working for my comfort necessarily. You were working for my character. But now, looking back, I am comforted. Really wasn't about my comfort at the time. 
the combination of the pandemic, the staffing transitions, and everything else that happened this year affected our finances as a church, but God provided. And I can remember specifically at different times saying, well, if we can just make it till September 1 financially, then at least by that time, we will have closed on the sale of our building, and th those monies are not for this, but if we were in an emergency, at least we would have a cushion there if we can just make it till September 1. <laughs> we didn't close on September 1. <laughs> But we made it to September 1, we made it to October 1, we made it to November 1, and we made it to December 1 and beyond. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like, that is no small thing, people. <laughs> wow. And God provided. We paid our bills. We still have a little money in savings. And uh, we, you know, we relied on some of that uh, during the year. But thank, thank the Lord uh, for the faithfulness of his people, you and me, us at MFC. Uh, we gave. We also worked together super hard. And we had the hugest moving sale ever, the mother of all moving sales. <laughs> and I don't know if I've told you the amount, but we brought in $10,000 <laughs> through the moving sale and online, uh, online sales. Some of, our, some of you put stuff online and, and sold it that way. And then we also sold uh, a bus that we had not been using uh, for $5,000. And I tell you that 15000 this fall, that really helped. And so I say, good job. Thank you, people. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. that you sent buyers and that we did it. And you know what? It's so cool. We did it together. Yeah. We did it together. Every Wednesday night at prayer gathering, we prayed for that moving sale, that God would help us sell that stuff, and it was for good reason. Yeah. We did need that, and God provided. Looking back, I am comforted. That's just us. Now, the church that bought our property, they faced a lot of challenges in 2020 also. You might think way, you might remember way back in January 29 of 2020. Just think about what was happening in the world, January 29 that's when we signed our agreement, our purchase and sale agreement, to sell this property. Uh, then our buyer said, this is awesome. Look, hey, God's giving us this. Great. They went, they found a couple of, two different lenders who were, who were actually excited and positive about lending to them. And then COVID happened. And commercial lending ground to a halt. Some lenders were requiring them to put 50% down. Can you imagine having to put 50% down on your house? That, that, that's what it would be like, only this is more millions than your house. <laughs> uh, there, the realtor for the buyer said this. So uh, she's the one who told me this story in detail. I've, I've heard bits and pieces from the buyer, but she, she, she wrote it out for me. So at the time, she said, it seemed like an impossible task to find a bank that would provide a loan for this transaction. So the church, uh, this church who bought our, our property, they raised a ton of funds, but they also needed a mortgage. Uh, and uh, right in the midst of this, this church has an international ministry, but guess what? In the spring, you couldn't fly. Uh, you could maybe get on a plane, but you maybe couldn't get back to this country. So all their fundraising trips that they had planned overseas were canceled. And there were a lot of difficult circumstances beyond their control. Their realtor said, this is what I expected. I expected our buyer to come to me and say, we got to back out. We need to wait till after the pandemic to do this. But they didn't. They said, oh no, we have faith in our God. And listen to this. She said, God doubled their finances for the first 11 months over the year prior. So 2020 for them was twice what 2019 was in a pandemic, people. In a pandemic. Are you hearing this? That is God. That is God. And I got to tell you, we're, we're going to say we were part of this. You know why? Because since January 29 of this year, our church has been praying for that church that God would bless them, that God would provide the financing that need. Do you remember every Wednesday night? 
That's why, that's why I love our prayer gatherings on Wednesday night. They're quick, they're powerful, they're focused, but man, we are praying about stuff and we are seeing God answer for our church. It is so amazing. We prayed for them and God provided. I know they were praying too. It wasn't only our prayers, but it was our prayers. We were praying for them, a very unselfish prayer that God would bless them, and he did. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, one of the early church leaders, Paul, was, he, was, he was writing about a time when he was suffering with a physical ailment. It, there are hints in the Bible, but it doesn't tell us exactly. We think it was an eye disease or eye injury. And it was, it was a serious thing. And he said, I prayed and prayed. And this was the answer that Jesus gave Paul. My grace is all. My grace is all you need. That is it. That's all you need. My power works best in weakness. So you might feel super weak right now. You might feel like there is nothing I can do to fix my life. But I got to tell you, there is one who can. There is one who has enough grace for you. His grace is enough. And when you're at your weakest, he is at his strongest. And he is pouring out his grace on you. In Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 to 13, this is a time when Jesus, uh, after Jesus rose from the dead, and he was, he was right, uh, Jesus said uh, to, his, uh, to one of his servants, to the apostle John, he said to John, John, I got some messages for different groups of Christians in, in the area of what's now known as modern Turkey, the, the country of Turkey. And, and Jesus said, I want you to write this down and send a letter from Jesus to that church. And there was one church that, that gathered in the city of Philadelphia. I don't know if you know, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania was not the first one. <laughs> there was one a couple thousand years ago <laughs> in Turkey. And the, 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 the Christians there were experiencing difficult times, and they felt like giving up. And Jesus said, this is the message from the one who is holy and true. So he's talking about himself. This is the message from the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. Amen. What he opens, no one can close. Amen. And what he closes, no one can open. Amen. And Jesus said to them, I know all the things you do. And I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word. And you did not deny me. And so Jesus goes on and he promises them a bunch of things based on their faithfulness. As a reward for your faithfulness, he said, I'm going to cause those people who are persecuting you to come and bow at your feet and apologize. Jesus said, I will protect you from the great time of testing. Jesus said, though you feel weak, I will make you stand strong as pillars in heaven. Wow. <laughs> And Jesus said this, I will write my name over your life. Wow. wow, what a reward for faithfulness to Jesus. And I want you to know this. Jesus sees you if you're struggling. Jesus knows when you got nothing. He knows. And Jesus sees your faithfulness. One day you're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of your master, your Lord. Jesus is planning a reward for the faithful. Jesus has got the key, and he opens doors that no one can shut. Man, so good. He closes doors that no one can open. Speaking of which, I have an announcement to make. Yesterday, Jesus gave us the keys to our new property. Praise the Lord. Almost 12 months, almost a year since we signed that contract. And so many times, in fact, dare I say, the most recent time of which was a half hour before closing, we did not know if it was going to happen. And yet, Jesus gave us the keys. 
What he opens, no one can shut. No pandemic, no financial crisis, nothing anyone could do could close the door that Jesus opened. So if God can pick up the, the shattered pieces of Joseph's life, Joseph, the stepdad of Jesus, if God can sustain us through the pandemic, transitions, the property sale, and purchase, if God can open a door for TCCI, the church who bought our property, when literally all odds were against them, just think what God can do for you. Yep. Just think what God can do for you. Ushers, I have a little gift that I want to hand out to everybody. Would you come and hand that out, please? We have a, a little symbolic gift for you if you're in the room today. And I, I want you to know the bottom line of this message is this. Jesus is your ultimate doorman. Jesus is your ultimate doorman. I did a little research on what doormen do in, in the big city like New York. They not only just open a door, but they protect it. They guard it. They make sure that the right people go in and go out. They accept deliveries. Like they serve the people who live there. Jesus is your ultimate doorman. He opens doors for you that no one can close. So I want to encourage you, trust Jesus to open doors for you and you'll experience his comfort and joy. We have been working like dogs, trying to get our building cleared out. We, we are almost done moving our offices to a different location within the same building and just all that stuff. And I've been working with uh, some volunteers this, this past week. And there's one friend who was telling me that she's been praying for something for a while. And, and she's not seen it. She's received a lot of pressure from people around her. Oh, just settle. Oh, just cave. And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait for Jesus. Amen. And when Jesus brings the answer, I will know it. And I have so much respect for my friend that she, what comforts her during this time while she's waiting is that Jesus opens doors that no one can close. So he's got her. He's got the situation. And uh, he can also close doors that don't need to be open for us because they would not be good for us. And he does that in our lives. Jesus conquered death when he died and rose again. And now he holds the keys of, the de of death and the grave. Hades is the, the original word. He opens and closes the doors in your life that he wants open and shut for his good purposes. You know, we quote that verse as one of my favorite verses, Romans 8, 28, that, that we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him. What we think that means is he is going to make my prayer request be answered in my way. That's what we think our good is. It's not. That is not what it means. It means he knows what's good for you, for your character, for your relationship with God. He knows what's good for you. And many times, Comfort in the world sense is not what's good for you. Be comforted in the fact that whatever's in your life, if you're trusting Jesus, it's, he's going to bring something good out of it for you and for his purposes, for his kingdom. Nothing can stand in his way and nothing can stand in your way. So two things I want to encourage you to do with the key we just handed out to you. Let this key Rem, uh, remind you of all the doors that God has opened for us this past year. Man, I told you about some of them as a church. Let this key remind you, wow, yes, and God did that. Yeah, and God did that, and God did that. Let, him, let this key remind you of all the things he's done for you. And may this give you comfort and joy. You notice that God does not just wipe away all the pain in our lives. I wish he would, but he doesn't. But he says, my grace is sufficient for you. It's enough for you to walk through the darkest valley because I'll be with you. Would you let that key also remind you to pray for your church? We are not done yet. I feel like it's taken us 12 months to get to the beginning. There's a lot. There's a lot yet to happen. So pray for the remodel process. 
Pray for the shared occupancy, which has been amazingly awesome so far. Pray for this evening service time. It's a strange thing for us. It's, it's a once in a century thing for us to only meet on Sunday nights. Um, pray also for our new name. Pray for a new vision that God would have for us. The, the building was never the vision. The building is the tool for the vision. And I already see in my mind's eye uh, times of spectacular worship, not spectacular in terms of anything showy, spectacular in terms of the presence of God, just so filling the room, tears running down our cheeks, people kneeling, bowing, shouting, raising their hands. I, I see that. I'm hoping that that's one of the first things that happens in our new tool once we get it all ready. Uh, pray for, that's the vision. Pray for the vision and how to reach our community, all that stuff. And then tonight, surprise, I want to invite you, if you would like to come and see the before picture, you know, on how, in remodels, they, they, they show the before and the after. We have not done a thing to it. Got the keys yesterday. If you'd like, if you haven't been inside, why don't you come on down after the service? I'm going to try to leave uh, more quickly than normal. I like to normally just chat for a long time in the lobby tonight. I'm going to try to leave because I'm, I'm the only one that has the key. So I'm going to get down there, open the doors. If you'd like to come for a tour, that would be awesome. Probably take about 10 minutes, and then I'll want us to just pray. It'll be the first time the congregation prays in that spot. So come see the before. It's at 702 Auburn Way North. So excited. Uh, a second thing I'd love to, to have this key remind you of. I, I hope that this key will remind you that Jesus is your ultimate door man. Jesus. He's going to open the right doors for you at the right time. Jesus. He will. He's big enough. If he can open up all the doors I just described during a pandemic, he can open up the doors for you. And until then, his grace is enough for you. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Those were his words. So I just want to speak over you. Nothing is impossible with God. If God is for you, who can be against you? No one. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are going to make it. You are. You are going to make it. Even if it's super tough right now, you are going to make it. Overwhelming victory is yours. If God is for you, who can be against you? James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, When troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Would you stand to your feet if you're in the room? If you're at home, would you get yourself into a prayer mode? Uh, when I watch online, I like to stand up. And so I encourage you, if you can, stand up. Let's change your position. Don't be sitting down eating your sandwich right now. Put that sandwich down. <laughs> Let's stand up. Let's pray. Let's get this thing going. We, we had a great prayer gathering. Every Sunday night at 530, we have a prayer gathering. Man, we prayed for this night. God's about to do something major in you at home and right here in the room. Would you pray with me? Why don't you bow your heads? Let's pray. Jesus, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you did for us in this past year. Many times it was hard, really hard. Many times there were questions. Many times there were struggles. Many times there were uh, raised voices and heated discussions. There, there, there's been so much over this past year, and yet you have been with us through it all. And now we look back and we're comforted because we can see that you were working, in fact, in a really good way. And now, after all we've been through, we trust you more. We trust you more. So that means we can face whatever's coming up with you, and it's going to be okay. Because you're with us, and you're our God. No matter what, your grace is enough for us. Even if you don't answer my prayer my way, your grace is enough for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you are struggling right now, in any way, whatever that means. 2020 has been this, it's been a year of struggle, man. If you're struggling, if you're struggling in any way, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in loneliness, if you're struggling in any way, 
If you're frustrated, discouraged, would you just raise your hand? And I want to pray for you online. Would you raise your hand to God too? Man, so many people say, yeah, I'm struggling. I am. I get it. I am struggling also. I am. <laughs> Full disclosure, struggling pastor. Yes. Let's go, let's go to the God who opens and closes doors. Amen. So Lord, right now, our hands are raised to you right here in the room and online. Our hands are raised to you. The only one who can make a difference. The president's not going to fix it. The CDC's not going to fix it. Our realtor's not going to fix it. The bank's not going to fix it. The school superintendent's not going to fix it. It's only you, Jesus. Amen. It's you. It's you. You, in your words, you said you are the one who opens doors that no one can shut. And you also shut doors no one can open. And so, Lord, right now, in, in these moments, we put our trust in you. Despite our pain, despite our struggle, we put our trust in you. We stand in the armor of God. We stand in the salvation that you worked for us. We stand in the peace you provide for us. We stand in that. We stand and Lord, I just pray that you would pour out your grace on every person, Lord. Every person that's struggling, oh God, pour out your grace. Lord, we want to ask you to take away the struggle. Yes. Bring the healing, provide the finances, repair the relationship. We, we want that, yes. But no matter what, just pray for your peace and your grace. May your grace right now just come like a river, like a river of the Holy Spirit right now on every person. Tongues of fire, light on each person right now. River of God, river of life, touch each person right now. Pour into each person right now, Lord God. And we stand in that. We stand in you, in the work you've done. We stand in your life, your power, your love. We stand in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you can put your hands down. One, one more invitation to prayer. Every, every week, I just want to give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus. Some of you right now, you're kind of embarrassed, like, oh, I've gone here a long time. Everyone probably thinks I'm already, you know, good to go in the salvation area, but I'm really not. You know what? Now is your time. Now is your time. I don't usually say that. Like, this is for somebody online or in the room. Now is the time. Don't wait another second to put your faith in Jesus. You may not have another second, so do it now. How do you do it? Turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. That's where you start. Just start there. All right? If you want to do that today, would you raise your hand so I can see, yes, I am doing that. I, I want to become a Christian. I want to make sure I'm saved right now. Yes. Thank you. I, and I really appreciate the hands that have gone up in the room and online also. So let's just, let's just, let's just emphatically pray full of faith together. If your hand is raised, man, you just pray from your heart to God, and I'm just going to coach you and lead you. Everybody repeat after me. Let's go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes. We just saw happen what we prayed for a half hour before service today. Some people got right with Jesus and put their faith in Jesus tonight. And if you did that just now, whether you're in the room or online, would you just text the words faith in Jesus to the phone number 97000? And that will let me know that you put your faith in Jesus tonight. And I just want to encourage you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Garrett. What an encouraging message. Thank you. And you know, the great thing about these keys is that each one of them opens the front door of our new building. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> the board members are going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> they do not. They're random keys. <laughs> It was so good to see you guys this week. Stay connected with us throughout the week. If you are new here or if you just want to get connected again, can you just text new to NFC, the word new, the number two, then NFC to 97,000. That just help, help fill out a connect card, helps us stay connected and keep connected with you guys. Um, also, if you are watching online, you're watching our live stream, would you just like and subscribe to our channel? It just helps so many more people find us so that the good news is being preached everywhere. 
We want to be a we want to be a witness not only in this building but throughout the world and throughout our country, and that's what we're hoping for. Um, also, do not forget if you want to check out the new building, head over to 720. 702, 702 Auburn Way North, um, just head north. Is that north? <laughs> On Auburn Way. On Auburn Way and you'll be there. <laughs> it's so good to see you guys. I'm directionally challenged, you know that. God bless you guys.